Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is the last video in my free data engineering course for beginners. Namely, this video is going to be about the load stage. Today we have to cover a lot of important concepts, so without further ado, let's get into it. The load stage is about loading the data to the database. But hang on a second, what database? Exactly, so before we dive into writing any code, let's talk about databases. First of all, databases can be divided into two types, relational and non-relational databases. Relational databases, such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite, store data in tables and rows. So you can say they are the SQL databases. And if you're wondering where the word relational is coming from, it basically means that those databases are built on relational algebra, but we don't have to worry about it. The other type of databases is called non-relational, such as MongoDB or DynamoDB. They store data in JSON documents. Relational databases are more reliable when you deal with a lot of data and complex queries, whereas the non-relational databases are more flexible. Flexible in a sense that once you've defined your tables, your schema, etc., then you're able to change it in non-relational databases and it's easy to do it. If you're interested in more details on relational versus non-relational databases, I can make a separate video about it. Let me know in the comments. In this tutorial, we are going to use the SQLite database. It is a relational SQL database, and we decided to use it because it's basically the simplest database to set up. Okay, so the second consideration is the database location. The data has to be stored somewhere physically. So either you store it on premise, that's the first location type. On premise means in the physical location where your company is, in the building or on your laptop, that's on premise. And the second location might be in the cloud, which basically means you store the data in the big, big data houses uh, owned by Google, Amazon AWS, some other providers. Again, there are pros and cons related to storing the data on the premise versus the cloud, uh, mostly related to costs of the storage, but we can cover that in a separate video. And one more thing that I think is very important to mention is ORM, Object Relational Mappers. This concept is only related to relational databases, but it's very important, so let's dive into it. Okay, so imagine you are writing some code in Python and you want to use the data that is stored in your relational database. Well, that's actually exactly what we are going to do. In order to retrieve the data from the database, you'd have to write some SQL, right? But you are writing your code in Python, so that is a bit inconvenient, you know, switching between SQL and Python and mixing the code up. ORM is a library that allows you to query the data directly from your code, so for example from Python, without using any SQL. An example of such an ORM is SQL Alchemy, which we are going to use today. And on that note, let's proceed to writing some code. Firstly, we're creating an engine and we are passing a database location with our SQL Lite database. You can pick any name you want. If this database doesn't exist, like it doesn't on your end, it will be created automatically. Then we are initiating a connection to our new database. And then we're creating a cursor, which is a pointer that allows us to refer to specific rows in a database. Now we are writing some SQL to create a new table for our data. As I said, instead of using SQL here, we could have used SQL Alchemy to define the tables and we wouldn't have to write this SQL code, but I just want to show you that you can do it both ways. Now we are saying, cursor, execute my query, and that's what the cursor does. Cool, so we've created our table, but for now it is empty. We don't have any data in it, it's just like a skeleton template where we are going to store our data. So now let's load our data to our table. Here we can use a very convenient method 
of Pandas data frames that allow you to insert the data directly from a data frame to an SQL database. We are saying index false because we don't want to keep the numbering of pandas in our data frame. And we are saying if exists, append, because what we want to do if the table exists, we want to append the new data. We don't want to overwrite the table because, you know, every day we're going to add new data to the table. Now close the connection and run the script. Cool, so what happened? If we want to know what happened, we have to have a look at our table. For viewing your tables and writing SQL code, I highly recommend a free database program called dBeaver. You can download it for free from the official website. I've already got it, so let's proceed. So now all you have to do is to connect to your newly created database. You'll notice that it appeared in the project folder. So now search for that database in the browse and voila, we are connected. Now the simplest SQL query ever and there we go. This is our table. It's empty. This is because I didn't listen to any Spotify songs in the last 24 hours. So just for the illustration purposes, let's come back to our script and let's tweak two things. Let's download the data from the last 60 days. Maybe I did listen to something within the last two months. I probably did. And one more thing we have to do is to remove the step from the validation stage that was checking that the data has to be from the last 24 hours because now clearly it isn't. Now run it, refresh the table in the viewer and voila, there we go. This is our data in the database. As you can see, I am a diehard Arctic Monkeys fan, but I promise I listen to other bands as well and Mozart. That's it. We've loaded the data to a SQL database. Now it will be good to automate this process so that we don't have to run this code manually every day on our own by clicking the button or anything like that. Instead, it will be good if it just happens by itself. But I will leave it for another video. Guys, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, any questions, any feedback, please let me know in the comment section below. And for now, I'm saying bye. Whoa, that was aggressive. Bye.